Crowd making its way into Wrigley Field as the I-94 series begins. 2016 edition, the Brewers and the Chicago Cubs. Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Spend the night with luxury. The good news is it's dry. And that's about where the good news stops. 42 degrees right now as you see the wind is whipping off the lake. The wind chill, yes, we are talking wind chill, 32 degrees, but we are anticipating dry weather, so we got that going for us as the Cubs get ready to take the field. Coming off of a nice road trip, they have played very well away from home. The Cubs, 10 wins in 13 games away from Wrigley Field. Now they are home for 16 of the next 19. Greg Council bringing his team here for the next three, and then it's back home to Miller Park for a homestand that begins Friday night against the Miami Marlins. Let's check out the Brewers batting order presented by Potawatomi. Domingo Santana, Jonathan VR, Jonathan Lucroy at the top. Chris Carter had another big day on Sunday and has fared pretty well in this ballpark. Kirk Newenheis, Aaron Hill playing third. Ramon Flores in the lineup and left. Ryan Braun getting a scheduled day off. Yadiel Rivera will hit eighth and play second. Jimmy Nelson is on the mound and that lineup for the crew will square off against Kyle Hendricks. Yeah, Kyle Hendricks, you can see his number is one and two with a 4.00 earned run average. He throws a lot of strikes. Well, he's got three walks, 15 strikeouts. Last time out, he took a loss to the Cardinals in St. Louis. Five innings, four runs. He's been very good against the Brewers in his career in six starts. He's four and one. Well, let's check out the Menards. Chicago Cubs defense are one of the better defensive teams in the National League. Solaire Fallow and Hayward in the outfield. Chris Bryan, Addison Russell, Ben Zobris, and Anthony Rizzo from third to first. And David Ross getting a spot start tonight. Miguel Montero, a late scratch to the lineup. Take a look at your umpire crew tonight. The crew chief will call balls and strikes. Larry Vanover, Alfonso Marquez, Chris Guccione, and David Rackley. Rounding out your crew here for this series at Wrigley Field. Before we get things going, you see Ryan Braun there and tell you why he is there and not in the lineup tonight. Let's check in with Sophia. Craig Council saying before the game that this was a scheduled day off for Braun to give him a back to back days off as the team begins a 20 consecutive game streak here. So Braun getting the day off, but likely in the lineup tomorrow. And again, just preventative uh, to give him time to heal from the back. And obviously, the cold and windy conditions not ideal uh, when you're trying to recover from an offseason back surgery. So just trying to keep Braun as productive as he has been this week. All right, Sophia, thank you very much. Kyle Hendricks with a strike, and we are underway here at Wrigley Field. Domingo Santana bringing a little five game hitting streak into this series opener in Chicago. One of the things you will notice, and you're probably already familiar if you follow this division closely, when Kyle Hendricks has his turn, he doesn't mess around. He's a get it and go kind of pitcher. Yeah, throws a lot of strikes. Mention only three walks, 15 strikeouts, and 18 innings. Basically, fastball. He'll four seam it, two seam it. It's got some sink on it, and he's got a very good changeup. Ball, two strikes to Domingo Santana, and gets him on that change here to begin the game tonight. Well, you would figure it's going to be a good night for the pitchers tonight. I mean, that bat's very brittle. The hands are slick. Tough to get a good grip on the bat. This is very similar, Matt, to the uh, no hitter. What was it, 29 years ago? Juan Nia was a very similar night. The only difference was it was raining. And not raining here tonight, but cold, windy, and not very favorable conditions for hitters. So a perfect night for Jimmy Nelson to throw one, you're saying. Here's Jonathan VR with a ground ball to Ben Zobris. And quickly there are two out here in the first. Yeah, the joke is that when you have weather like this, it's in the low 40s. I mean, wind chill in the 30s. Yeah. Pitch inside. That's where you have, particularly if you've got the fastball to Jimmy Nelson. There's a look at it. You're really going to have to get into one to get one out of here tonight. It's Kyle Hendricks. Ivy Leaguer, Dartmouth College. One is a very even keel guy out there on the mound. He will face Jonathan Lucroy. A strike to the Brewers catcher. He brings a not, or rather an eight game hitting streak into this series. And the career numbers 
a little low when you look at the average but he's been a pretty steady hitter so far Lucroy began the year with a seven game hitting streak and now has one of eight games. And has had a couple of days to rest they kept him out of the lineup on Sunday Martin Maldonado per usual working with Willie Peralta and then the team had a day off yesterday. And Luke hadn't had many days off he catches quite a bit. He mentioned that uh, eight game hitting streak and Luke really doesn't feel as though he's locked in. But still getting his hits off to a much better start this year than last. A ball two strikes Hendricks versus Lucroy. Impressive performance by the Brewers on Sunday to salvage a game in that series with the Phillies wrapping out 12 hits in an eight to five win. Great Council's team comes to Chicago with an eight and eleven record. Lucroy with a bouncing ball another chance for Zobrist and it's a one two three inning. Here in the first Hendricks needing all of 10 pitches and now Jimmy Nelson getting ready to go to work as he takes on those red hot Chicago Cubs hitters. Two three in the top half of the first and now the Cubs getting their first crack at it Joe Madden second year led his team to the National League Championship Series last year a wild card win over the Pirates beat the Cardinals in the divisional round before losing to the Mets in the NLCS here's the Cubs batting order presented by Potawatomi Dexter Fowler Jason Hayward Chris Bryant at the top Anthony Rizzo his cleanup Ben Zobrist and Jorge Soler Addison Russell the veteran David Ross and Kyle Hendricks rounding out the batting order against Jimmy Nelson off to a good start here for the crew this season. Yep, he's uh, won his last three, three and one overall for Jimmy, and beat the Twins his last time out, six and two thirds, only four runs, and he has been very good so far this year. And he will face the second leading hitter in the National League in terms of batting average, Dexter Fowler, hitting a cool 385. Only Daniel Murphy has been better here in this first month of the season. And the Cubs almost lost him in the offseason. He's able to come back and at the top of this very powerful Chicago Cubs batting order. A ball is strike to the center fielder. Yeah, he turned down the team's qualifying offer. There were reports that he was about to work out a deal with the Orioles and that Obviously turned out not to be the case and ends up signing a one year deal back here in Chicago. There's a bouncing ball that Nelson knocks down Aaron Hill is there. And it's one five three on the outs. No, good job by Hill able to make a good reaction. And Jimmy knocked it down Hill was able to get it and. Yeah, Dexter Fowler pretty fast down the line still able to get him. let's check out the Nards. 
Brewers defense. You got Flores, Newenhuis, and Santana in the outfield. Remember Ryan Braun sitting this one out. Hill v. Art Rivera. Yadiel Rivera not in the initial lineup for the Brewers. Scooter Jeanette had a little bit of an injury during batting practice. Not sure how serious it is. Carter at first and Jonathan Lucroy behind home plate. One up, one down, bottom of the first, and one of the new faces to this Cubs roster this year, Jason Hayward. Last year with the St. Louis Cardinals, but signed a big contract to move within the division from St. Louis to the Cubs. Hayward was scuffling the first couple of weeks of the season, but things have turned around for him in the last five games he has gone 10 for his last 20 and that has his average at 260 swings through a fastball for Nelson a ball two strikes and 93 miles an hour seems more like 103 in this weather tough to really get loose you know the muscles are stiff the bat is brittle tough to get a good grip on that bat in this weather not just because of the cold temperatures but the wind doesn't help you either and yeah, blowing right in their faces and at the plate as Nelson misses two and two the count You're almost doing you know hitters a favor throwing something really off speed except for that Kyle Hendricks change up that's a little bit different yeah it's cold <laughs> there's Jonathan VR in there somewhere that Chris Carter in the dugout toward the end of batting practice uh, the look was very similar Hard to see behind all that warm weather gear. And that is strike three called. Nelson rings him up. And there are two men out here in the bottom of the first. Hey, guys don't like swinging on the inner half of the plate. Inside corner. You get eaten up. Those uh, hands kind of buzz on you. So, you know, look for Jimmy to establish inside. He has so far, and that was about as good a pitch as you could make. On the inside corner, right at the knees. Got to get that pitch. Larry Vanover, the home plate umpire, punches him out. Here's Chris Bryant's. First pitch swinging and fouls it along the line. Playing third tonight, although he will play left field. He has played there already, and that would look to continue with his Cubs team. Remember, they lost Kyle Schwarber. In the first week of the season to a season ending knee injury. There's a guy who could hit a ton. But they have fared just fine without him at least through most of this month of April. They converted catcher Schwarber and uh, everybody thought that was going to be a big loss but you know, the Cubs just keep on keeping on. They are scoring a lot of runs. They've been covering left field pretty well. And Joe Madden keeps them all loose. A ball is strike to Bryant last year's National League Rookie of the Year. Drove in 99 runs in 2015, 26 homers. And he's out in front of that offering from Nelson. A ball, two strikes. That slider from Jimmy. Jimmy looking for his first winning decision against the Cubs, but the ERA has been pretty solid. 360 and five starts, we mentioned. Brewers came in here last year, and as rough as the month of April was, and it was very rough, no one will deny that, they did come into Wrigley and took two out of three and then beat them two out of three at Miller Park the first time around, and then the Cubs from there turned it around and dominated the series and just had a terrific season that took them all the way to the NLCS where they were swept away by the Mets. They remember the Cubs didn't have Chris Bryant in April. I think that turned things around offensively for the Chicago Cubs give you that big right handed bat to compliment Rizzo. Yeah when they brought him up they didn't mess around his debut was in the cleanup slot. And he proved that he could handle the role. 2 2 pitch. Did he go? He did not. Says Alfonso Marquez in a full count now to Chris Bryant. Well, first base umpire says he didn't go. I guess I'd agree with it, right? 
Pretty close. Full count to Bryant. This Cubs team looks like the Brewers. In fact, even a bit more so than the Brewers. Terrific at drawing walks. As Bryant stays in there. We mentioned it, it's a a team that has done very little wrong. A run differential of plus 68. They score better than six runs a game. Starting pitching has been very good. But we remind ourselves it is still just April 26th. Long way to go. Yeah. And Bryant strikes out swinging. So Nelson with a good start. He gets two strikeouts in the first frame here at Wrigley Field. And as the Brewers get ready to come up, one of the hot hitters in this Brewers lineup, Chris Carter, the big man. He bats cleanup, and he'll lead off the top of the second. Wrigley Field scoreless Brewers and Cubs is Chris Carter he has been an extra base machine for this Milwaukee Brewers club 18 hits overall but check it out nine doubles tied atop the National League and five home runs as he has been as advertised and maybe a little better averages up on base percentage very good at 361 that's his OBP coming into this game. A big guy that really doesn't try to pull the baseball does you see you see the direction a lot of those hits center field left center around the right field line and you know, if he continues to do that I mean I'm just going to stay up there doesn't try and pull it doesn't have to to hit the ball out of the ballpark off to a great start. Each of those nine doubles two of them coming on Sunday against the Phillies. Drove in a couple of more runs. Brewers had their biggest inning of the year on Sunday, a sixth run, sixth inning. As they got to the young starter, and a very good one for the Phillies in Jared Eikhoff, but once they got a read on him as they were going through that lineup that second time around, beyond, they were able to get to him. We'll count now to the Brewers' first baseman. Yeah, Brewers probably glad they don't have to deal with a curveball tonight. <laughs> a lot of curveballs right. that they faced you know, on the homestand. And effective curveballs at that. And Carter is able to work a walk here to begin the second inning. You mentioned it with the Cubs, and it is a continuing theme with the Brewers, their ability to work pitchers into counts and draw a walk here, and this time it's Carter to begin the second. Yeah, and Carter was down in the count 0-2, able to uh, Take some close pitches and earn the walk. So there's your first base runner of the night. And Kirk Neuenheis back in there in center field. He had a good day for himself on Sunday against the Phillies. Craig Council mentioned 
And beyond the obvious of the hits and good heads up base running. Newman Heist played well for his manager and back in the starting lineup tonight. And if you're just tuning in, a scheduled day off for Ryan Braun. Well, Ramon Flores gets the call in left field. Newman Heist back in there in center. And Scooter Jeanette scratched from the starting lineup. So two of the starters, two of the hot hitters for the Brewers out of the lineup tonight. A ball is strike to Newman Heist. Henrik's debuted for the Cubs a couple of years ago. Came up in mid July. Had a very good year, seven and two. Last year he was kind of the king of the no decisions. An eight and seven record, but 17 no decisions last season. Man, that was the first swing the Brewers took in this inning. Tenth pitch and Neuenheis first swing. So they're looking to be patient against Hendrick, and he's not a guy that's going to walk too many. Lewin Heist with a fly ball hit back into center field. Fowler is on the run, can't get it. It's going to go near the wall, and Carter will motor over to third. Lewin Heist to second with a double. Kirk Lewin Heist coming off a two for four game on Sunday. Gets a base hit in his first at bat here tonight. And bucking a stiff wind, blowing across in from left, and out of the reach of Dexter Fowler. Now Fowler playing a little bit deeper this year. Trying to take away the extra base hit didn't get a good a very good jump. And that ball hit a ton in this weather when you talk about the the cold temperatures and the wind. And you see the good contact by Neuenheit just a little bit off the sweet spot but still able to get enough of it. Well, a scoring chance here in the second for the Brewers as Aaron Hill steps in. Aaron had a hit in an RBI on Sunday, and as you see, good numbers against the Cubs in his career. So a leadoff walk to Carter, a double from Kirk Neuenheis has the Brewers in business. So the count of 2-0, and oh, the catcher in his final season, David Ross, out with a quick chat for Kyle Hendricks. It's a quick trip to the mound. Ross, the personal catcher for John Lester. Getting a spot start tonight. Miguel Montero was scratched because of a back issue. Didn't want him catching in this cold weather. Two balls, no strikes to Aaron Hill. We have mentioned Hill has made some good, hard contact. Try to stay the course and get that average up. And there's a fly ball hit back into left field. Solaire with room. He'll make the catch as Carter tags. And he will score. Sacrifice fly. Aaron Hill to open up the scoring here at Wrigley Field. Yeah, that's something the Brewers uh, offense has been doing a pretty good job of getting those runs in. Yeah, Hill sounded like he hit it pretty well, but uh, good luck hitting it out of the ballpark unless you're one of the big boys today. And Solero to make the catch, and the Brewers on the board first. So the Brewers trying to reverse a Cubs trend. We mentioned how their run differential is a plus 68 they do a lot of that damage in the early innings but it's the Brewers first on the board here tonight. One out to new and heist the runner at second for Ramon Flores. He's getting his 11th start of the year is Flores his third out in left field. And getting his first look at the Cubs. Uh, such a different look to the Brewers lineup without Ryan Braun but you know Craig Council said even before the season began that he's going to have to bide his time he's going to have to pick spots to give him days off and today's the day for Ryan. So opportunity for Ramon Flores. See what he does today. There's a bouncing ball to short that's Addison Russell for the out. 
two away as Newman Heist moves to third. Hey, you're right about you know Council and and, and Braun. I know we've talked about it before, but it is worth mentioning again. And you figure if you can get 140 games out of Ryan Braun, that's that's a really good year. Remember that the back surgery, the maintenance on the thumb. And spot his days off, keep him as fresh as you can for as long as he can. Yeah. If, if he can play 140, you figure he's going to rack up some really big numbers. Yeah, off to the, one of the best starts he's ever had in the big leagues. I mean, and that's, that's saying something when you consider Brun has had some really good starts to the years. All bundled up in a spectator here tonight. Got to yell Rivera. Getting his first action since last Wednesday in the game at Miller Park against the Twins. As Rock mentioned, Scooter Jeanette, late scratch. So Rivera plays second and bats eighth here tonight. And strike three is called, caught the corner, and the Brewers. Are retired here in the second, but they get a run across. And the Brewers now with the early lead in Chicago. Here in the second inning on a cold night at Wrigley Field, the Brewers off to a one to nothing lead and our quick and loans rocket arms shows the strikeout leaders for both of these teams. Jimmy Nelson leading the Brewers with 21. John Lackey leading the Cubs with 27 and Jimmy Nelson has won three starts in a row here, but he feels he has some cleaning up to do, especially in the later innings. Last year it was a different story for Nelson. He struggled in the first few innings. In innings one through three, he gave up 48 runs. That number went down to 28 in innings four through six. He feels that this year he's actually struggled in the later innings. He feels he's just losing his focus, so that's something that he's been working on in his bullpens, uh, making some changes. Just wants to get into the zone early with all of his pitches and get ahead in counts. Yeah, it seems like it just turned on a dime. You know, he, he would be rolling along and then. Uh, Give up some long balls. Yeah, but you're talking about, you know, sixth, seventh innings. I yep. mean, that's pretty good. I mean, third time through any big league lineup is a challenge for a starting pitcher. And Jimmy has been eating up innings and, uh, you know, giving a very worked bullpen some time off when he's been able to get out there on the mound. Three quality starts in his first four. The ball is strike to Anthony Rizzo, leading off the bottom of the second inning. Those are one of those team leaders, but he's all of 26 years old. But certainly a veteran with this club, and you really, when you look at the numbers, you need to ignore the average, the run production, the eight homers, the 21 RBIs. Runs batted in the most he's had in any calendar month. Man, it's kind of surprising the, uh, you know, the batting average. I mean, he walks a lot, he hits the homers, extra base hits, and. 
And you talk to these folks around here that follow the Cubs will tell you that he hit into a lot of bad luck early on. And yeah, but still got off to a slow start. Anyway you shake it but he's uh, swinging a bat right now. Two balls two strikes. What Anthony Rizzo has done lately, his last five games. Check it out five homers and driving in 10. You see, doing a little work at the expense of the Cardinals and the Reds here in the last week. And that two home run game in there and doing some big time damage at Great American Ballpark. And the Cubs took three out of four in that series. Scoring 38 runs in the process, 16 of them last Thursday night when tomorrow's starter, Jake Arrieta, threw his second no hitter of his career. As he threw one last season and just nine regular season starts between the no hitters. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, and it really wasn't much mystery as to the outcome of the game and then no hitter, right? 16 to nothing. <laughs> I mean, they have been racking up some run totals. Yeah, look at their closer, Hector Rondon. He's got three saves, that's all. I mean, the wins have been big wins. Large, large leads. Well-rested bullpen. Rizzo back up the middle, but right there is out number one. Is Aaron Hill flipping over there as the Brewers make their adjustments? Yep, keep your eyes out the way teams we use the word shift. That is not a word that Craig Council is particularly fond of, but got to call it something. Well, though. Exactly. Out of the ordinary, I guess, uh, you know, for the Brewers, it's ordinary to have a defensive alignment as they do. I mean, I guess a an unusual alignment would be straight away. Certainly been the case with, with this team and more and more in baseball. There's Ben Zobrist. This is about as uh, straight away as you're going to ever see a Brewer infield lined up. Zobrist, another one of the new faces to the Cubs this season, but he has been around and has put together a very good career. He helped the Royals to the World Series championship. After a deadline trade from Oakland. Two-0 pitch. And Nelson missing with a fastball. And he and Joe Madden uh, been together you know, with the Tampa Bay Rays. And uh, you talk about a super utility player. This guy could play anywhere. But right now he's the everyday second baseman. And he draws a walk, so there's the first base runner for the Cubs here tonight. Talk about the, the shifting that the Brewers have been doing, and you see it more and more across baseball, but only the Astros do it more than the Brewers. There you see nearly 40% of the time. Now, when we say shift here, we're talking about the, the Ted Williams shift. You can refer to it that way when you have three infielders, either to the right or the left of second base. So that's shifting is is defined in that graphic but you can, you can still adjust and just not that dramatically. Solaire pops it up and this will carry a couple of rows into the seats. Yeah, Brewers general manager David Stearns prefers to use optimal positioning as opposed to shifting. I've got to come up with a fancy term for it. I yeah. mean I guess shifting means you're shifting everybody. But that's not the case. Strategic positioning. That's still too long. Yeah. I'm shorten that up it takes a little too bit. Long. You're it right. does. <laughs> We're in a brevity. Jorge Soler at the plate. Twenty four year old. Injury plagued last year. The oblique strain cost him about three weeks. An ankle sprain kept him out a month. 
but when he was in uniform, he had 262 with 10 homers. He makes contact, he hits it hard. Yeah, I mean, he can hit him as far as anybody when he makes contact. Strike it strikes out quite a bit. Nelson with a 1 1. This is a Cubs team that as good as the year was last year they did strike out a ton more than anyone in the big leagues 1500 times Madden's team has struck out going back to last year but they still won a lot of games yeah a lot of power in their lineup obviously and yeah, very good starting pitching. So Lair sends this out of play and that'll even the count two balls two strikes. But as you mentioned I mean you say it's early in the season and it is it's still April and the Cubs are red hot they're steamrolling over a lot of teams and that might not last forever. But you have to think as the year goes on there's going to be more and more talk they've they've handled all the, the hoopla the attention but. When you get into summer, and then when September turns to October, then we'll see. I'll just bring out some zoo animals in the outfield, and uh, everything will be fine. <laughs> Did that last year when the Brewers were in town in September. Petting zoo in the outfield for the Cubs players and families. And when you win a lot, they call you eccentric. Right. Call you a genius. <laughs> Nelson keeping an eye on Zobrist. The Cubs team that doesn't run a ton. That's strike three call. That's the second backwards K from Jimmy Nelson. His third strikeout here so far tonight. And both of the cut lookings are pitches on the inside corner. I'm telling you guys don't like to swing on the inner half of the plate inside corner right at the knees. Got Jason Hayward a left handed batter pretty much the same spot down and in. That's good moving he's got tonight. I mean that sinker that two seamer has got some got some good movement some late movement. Two out Zobrist the runner at first for Addison Russell. Shortstop. And you see that uh, two seam fastball the rotation look at the way that pitch moves right on the edge and Solaire caught looking. Russell pops this up Chris Carter. Will not have a play. Yeah, wind's going to be pushing everything toward the stands over the Brewers' dugout tonight. Pop up should be interesting tonight. Blowing pretty hard out there tonight. If anyone homers to left, you really earn it. A ball is strike to Russell. Good defender trying to get that average up. Nelson out in front of all two strikes. Ground ball to Rivera. And a good inning again for Jimmy Nelson. He walks Zobris, but no damage done. We're through two. The Brewers with the early lead.
T-Mobile get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE since 2015. And by Hubie and Abraham, 1-800-800-5678. Hubie and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Downtown Chicago, this time last night, it was almost 80 degrees. It is not 80 degrees tonight. Brewers, though, off to a good start, leading one to nothing. Jimmy Nelson looking good so far in the mound. Now he'll get his first cuts against Kyle Hendricks. Nelson one for nine at the plate so far this season. Start number five for the big right hander. Surrendering only a walk through the first two. And taking a look at strike three called. Hey, for today only, the Brewers are holding a special one day flash sale. Presented by U.S. Cellular, featuring four dollar and twenty six cent tickets. You know why? I've got that. April twenty sixth, four twenty six. Thank you very much. That's pretty good for their upcoming series against the Angels, Monday, May second through through Wednesday the fourth. Get your tickets by midnight tonight at Brewers.com/slash flash sale. Keep you on your toes. Four twenty six. Perfect. That's a good deal. Wow. Domingo Santana, he struck out to begin the game. $4.26 to see Albert Pujols, Mike Trout, and the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. That is a deal. I had another name in there, too. Andrelton Simmons. Not, uh, not a great hitter, necessarily, but a very slick fielding shortstop. On that ball club now. Be a fun home stand. You got the Marlins this weekend and then the Angels. Six game stand for the crew, and then they head on the road for seven. Cincinnati and then down to South Florida. Take on the Marlins. 3 1 to Santana. There's a bouncing ball in the hole. It's short, but Russell, he's good, and he shows you why there. Two men out. Nice play. And Chris Bryant uh, thought he could get it. Kind of disrupted the concentration of Russell, but. Not too much. He's able to make the backhand pickup and a good throw to first. Cubs, one of the better defensive teams in the National League. See Bryant running by and Russell able to make a good throw to first. The only 10 errors committed by the Cubs so far is Jonathan VR. Grounded to second back in the first inning. Brewers pushed a run across in the top of the second off of Hendricks. Carter a walk, New and Heiss a double, and Aaron Hill a sacrifice fly. Two strikes and nothing now to the Milwaukee shortstop. Yeah, Brewers are not doing a lot of swinging early in the game. Taking some pitches. Hendricks has been missing with some, but he's getting a fair amount of called strikes. Here's the one two and rolls it over to Zobrist and that'll do it for the Brewers as they are retired in order. We move to the bottom of the third. It's one nothing. Go on.
here in Wrigley Field. I think it's a little tough to come by, but they found the way. Brewers with the early lead. Bottom of the third we go. Time now for the carsoup.com trivia question. Which two managers led the Cubs to back-to-back postseason experiences or appearances? Which two managers led the Cubs to back-to-back postseason appearances? Something Joe Madden is trying to get done this season. Jimmy Nelson off to a good start. He has given up just a walk through the first two innings. He has struck out three. And he will face David Ross. Playing his 15th year in the big leagues. Mentioned he's the personal catcher for John Lester, but he also was the catcher for Arietta's no hitter in Cincinnati last Thursday. That was his first career no hitter working behind the plate. Ground ball to short. That's VR. He gobbles it up, and there's out number one. He's made a nice career out of, uh, you know, behind home plate. Never has been a big offensive threat. I'm talking about Ross, but boy, he can catch. He calls a good game and certainly has the confidence of John Lester. That's good work if you can find it. <laughs> Staying in the big leagues because of a pitcher. Not that he wouldn't be a backup somewhere else anyway, but. We talk a lot about his leadership, presence in the clubhouse. A very good pro. Kyle Hendricks, the pitcher. Both pitchers actually hitting in the more traditional nine spot here tonight. Craig Council has jostled it from time to time, but pitcher hitting ninth. Hendricks reaching out, and this will go foul down the line. Take about. Oh, and two the count. Scoots him back. Kyle Hendricks, 26 years old. Drafted by the Rangers five years ago. Traded to the Cubs. In 2012, part of the Ryan Dempster swap. Strike three call. There's punch out number four for Nelson. Three of them have been looking. Hey, Brewer fans, if you can't watch the games on TV, you can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app. Log in and stream the Brewers wherever you go. Two men out, Dexter Fowler. Officially, it was a 1 5 3 ground out in the first off the glove of Nelson, and then Hill was there to complete the play. Didn't have far to go. They had Hill playing way off the line and shallow, you know, protecting against the possible bunt from Fowler. He will do that. That's why you have Aaron Hill pretty much uh, shallow and off the line. Not the normal way that they like to play defense against a lefty. There you see Hill. Just in case Fowler decides to bunt. Nelson ready to bring the 1 1. Straight back it goes. 30 year old Dexter Fowler. We mentioned how hot of a hitter he has been at 385 average. Check out the on base percentage. Actually, all the numbers. Yeah. Extremely impressive. If it's the proverbial chip on the shoulder thing, it's working really well for him here in April. But he goes down swinging as Nelson looking good here through the first three innings of the ball game. Brewers lead one nothing after three.
over the cobs here at Wrigley as we head to the fourth, and you can support Brewers Community Foundation this season by rounding up in the Brewers Team Store. By rounding up your bill to the nearest dollar and donating your change to BCF, you can help change the lives of kids and families in need all around the state. And as uh, Kyle Hendricks gets back to work here on the mound, Hendricks has had very good success against the Brewers. He's gone four and one in six starts, an ERA of just one four five. He's actually shut them out three times. And so Craig Council was saying he's so successful against them because he just pitches on the edges. He says it's a challenge for the hitter because even if he's missing his location, it's very close to the strike zone. So Hendricks has done a nice job living on the edges against the Brewers and Council said he will make the mistakes. So you certainly have to take advantage when he does. And the Brewers have been able to do that at least to get this early lead as Jonathan Lucroy leads off the second. Or excuse me the fourth inning the Brewers scored their run in the second on one hit the double by Neuenheis after a walk to Carter and a sack fly. And we talk about that Kyle Hendricks changeup, but I tell you his uh, his cut fastballs a pretty good one tonight. You got fastballs darting both different ways. The two seamer going in on the right hander and the cutter going away. Two strikes and nothing to Lucroy. Bounces it up there. Mentioned the success that Hendricks has had against the Brewers, but ERA of an even four and a one and two record here so far this season for the Cubs. There's a fly ball out to right, and that's Jason Hayward, one out. And some gaudy earned run averages for this starting rotation for sitting for Chicago. Two guys under one, Hamlin Arietta. Lester is what at 198. Well, they're throwing the baseball pretty well. Going deep in the game, 16 quality starts from this Cubs rotation. And this is game number 20 for Chicago. And John Lackey in four starts with an ERA around five, which is a bit of a surprise. One and one to Carter. Drew a walk. That's how the Brewers second inning started. Eventually scored on the sacrifice fly off the bat of Aaron Hill. Out in front there of all two strikes. Let's check out the Powerball home run leaderboard. Chris Carter with five. Likewise for Ryan Braun. Not in the lineup tonight is Braun. Scooter Jeanette also not in the lineup. Next in line with four. Two balls, two strikes to Chris Carter. And there's a ground ball and through into center field, a base hit. There you go, the shift uh, hurting the Cubs that time. Good job by Chris Carter to go right with it. 2 2 pitch, everything away to Chris in that at bat. Able to get the ground ball up the middle to the first base side of the bag, nobody there. Nice easy swing. I mean, uh, it's amazing. He doesn't have to swing all that hard, almost as if he's trying to push it in that direction to get his base hit. Nothing to it near that strong. <laughs> Must be nice. Here's Kurt Neuenheis. Pick it up where he left off on Sunday against the Phillies. Two hit game. And a double here tonight. Back in the lineup out in center field. And there's a ground ball to Zobris. That's Russell for one and on to first for the double play. Four, six, three to end the inning. And we move to the bottom of the fourth with the Brewers still out in front, one nothing.
fourth inning here at Wrigley and Saturday night is superhero night presented by Quick Trip the Brewers Battle of the Marlins and fans who purchase a theme night special ticket package will get a Jonathan Lucroy superhero bobblehead go to Brewers.com slash theme night. Bottom of the fourth we go Jimmy Nelson surrendering only a walk through the first three. They face the two three and four hitters for Chicago Hayward Bryant and Rizzo. Here's Jason Hayward the right fielder. To the last better part of the week Hayward has been hitting it well last year with the Cardinals he got off to a very slow start at the plate hit just 217 in the month of April but the rest of the way he hit 306. Yeah, he can hit he's a force offensively and tremendous outfielder really good right fielder good arms covers a lot of ground. Eight year contract he signed and, and when they signed him there's a lot of thought that he was going to be playing center because Dexter Fowler had turned down the qualifying offer and seemed like he could be moving on but when he ended up coming back and signing his deal with the Cubs that get, gives them their, their best outfield combo there with Fowler in center and center and Hayward a gold glover over and right. Yeah those guys can uh, cover a lot of ground I mean Hayward. Those long strides, Dexter Fowler can run. Hayward has three gold gloves, including two here in the last couple of seasons. There's a bouncing ball to Yadiel Rivera, and there's out number one. Jimmy doing a good job keeping the ball on the ground tonight. He's got that good two seam fastball working, getting under the bat to these Cubs so far. Chris Bryant. Five ground ball outs for Nelson. Five strikeouts, including the Cubs third baseman, that ended the first inning. And there's a ground ball, and that is a fair ball down the third baseline. Bryant on his way to second as Flores runs it down. There's the first hit of the night for the Cubs. Almost the same pitch that struck him out his first time up that two seam fastball trying to get in on his hands and Brian waiting for it this time opens up those hips and rips it down the line and the fastball a little bit in off the plate. He got him the first time but Brian got him the second time right on the line it goes over the bag in fair territory it doesn't matter what happens beyond the bag. And David Rackley calls it fair down the line. So Anthony Rizzo steps in. Rounded out into the shift. They had Hill on the first base side of the bag at second and took care of a ground ball off of Rizzo's bat. Yeah, Yadio Rivera playing short right field. He's in softball position. <laughs> There he is, way over there. And that's Hill near the bag at second. Oh, and one the count to Rizzo. Rifles that out of play. Talked about that wind, how it's whipping around. If anything, it's. Seems like it might be picking up and going right into the face of the hitter. And positional change for the Brewers. Now that there's two strikes, you get VR up the middle. They move Hill from up the middle over to third base. It's the uh, the other storyline to all the adjustments made defensively. It changes within the at bat. That's exactly what has happened here. Two strikes and nothing to Anthony Rizzo. It's like in football going to the line of scrimmage and calling an audible. Guys moving around all over the place. And 
no real putting your head down and just taking it for granted that you see Rizzo hasn't really used left field all that much was a bit of a surprise he's very good at going to the opposite field. The ball two strikes. Let's think about the adjustments the pitcher has to be on board and, and know the alignment behind him and that's that's part of the adjustment that you you hear and read about more and more and only seen some stories in the the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel Adam McCalvey this the, the same theme and it's it isn't going away the number of shifts is projected right now to accelerate and maybe you may see it 70 times more or up 70 percent I should say from even a year ago Rizzo goes down swinging strikeout number six now for Jimmy Nelson Yeah, swinging and one out of the zone that one way out of the strike zone up upstairs and gets his strikeout right by him Jimmy's got good stuff tonight well, that one only at 92 but again I mean it's tough to get loose out there in these conditions Wind blowing, the fingers are slick. You don't get a real good grip on the baseball, which is probably why both of these pitchers are, are staying with the hard stuff tonight. Tough to get a feel for that baseball. Ben Zobrist walked in the second inning. He was the first Cubs base runner in this game. Chris Bryant, a one out double. Rizzo struck out. And now Nelson trying to keep the Cubs off the board. One strike pitch. It's sharply but foul. Zobrist in January of last year was traded from Tampa Bay to Oakland as part of the John Jaso deal. Jaso now, of course, with the Pirates. And then was a deadline trade from the A's to the Royals. 34 years old. The 0 2. As Rock mentioned, his versatility, talking about Zobrist, who can play just about anywhere. Two time All Star in 09, as well as 2013, both with the Rays. Yeah, Joe Madden called him his irregular regular over there in Tampa. He'd be in there every day, but I'm you know, not sure where he was going to put him. A career 265 hitter is Zobrist. It has a little pop in his bat. As well, not so much the last or last year, maybe even last couple, but he's had some pretty good years driving the ball out of the park. A couple of 20 homer seasons back in 2011, 2012. In fact, in 11, he drove in 91 runs, the same two years before. Two balls, two strikes. It in the air, left field. Flores near the line. And that'll do it. So a double from Chris Bryant, but Nelson keeps the Cubs off the board through four.
Brewers leading the Cubs one to nothing here at Chili Wrigley Field. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Surfrider Foundation in celebration of this month's Every Day is Earth Day initiative by making simple changes in our daily lives. We can make a big impact on our environment. Go to FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more about what you can do to be part of the solution. You see Yadiel Rivera there. He will hit third in the uh, fifth inning. The official word on Scooter Jeanette's right oblique tightness. Yeah. Well, it's not a strain, which is good. Just tightness, which means you hope that it's not going to be you know, too long for him. Those obliques, those obliques and those intercostals and those things can uh, hang around for months. Hopefully they got it you know, before it got too bad. So that's why Scooter is the late scratch and Rivera is in there at second. Aaron Hill leading off. Hill Flores and Rivera here in the top of the fifth. Against Kyle Hendricks. Run on two hits for the Brewers. Nothing in one hit for the Cubs. Good pitching on a cold night. First pitch, the temperature was 42 and felt more like 34. It always seemed to me like pitchers had the advantage in these kind of nights. Will take strike two cold. Count is full now on the third baseman. It's one of those games, anything in on the hands as a hitter, you probably don't want any part of it. You're going to feel it. And he'll take strike three called on what he thought was ball four. Home plate umpire Larry Vanover, the crew chief. Well, let's check it out. Another you know, two seam fastball. Looked like a pretty good pitch. That's an awfully difficult pitch to take with two strikes. And Larry Vanover, home plate umpire, liked it. Yeah, it looks to me like that had the plate. But he just caught the edge. And as Rock mentioned, Hendricks not one to uh, issue a lot of walks. He has won so far tonight. There's a ground ball off the bat of Flores, handled by Chris Bryant. Two up, two down here in the fifth. And Hendricks through his first three starts, uh, walking only three. Gave up 43 walks a year ago in 180 innings. Likes to work quickly and likes to pound the zone. Here's Yadiel Rivera. He's a strikeout victim to win the second inning. the fifth start for Rivera this season his third at second base and mentioned seeing his first playing time since last Wednesday six days ago against the twins but we'll find out together moving forward with Scooter Jeanette with the right to oblique tightness awfully difficult for a young player to be able to stay sharp and not getting a whole lot of playing time he did early in the year he had a great spring he didn't play for about six days and got two hits first game in. That's a difficult thing. Very versatile, a strong arm. He and Jonathan VR around that infield. Those are the two when you look at guys who can just get it there in a hurry. You know, Rivera last year came up late, played in seven games. He got his feet wet life in the big leagues and getting an opportunity this season and see what he can do with it tonight two and two against Hendricks bouncing ball right back to the pitcher and it's a one two three inning for Kyle Hendricks we are halfway through this series opener with the Brewers leading one to nothing.
Dodgers leading the Cubs one to nothing. Well, Jimmy Nelson came in with three quality starts and his cricket something to smile about. So far, so good tonight for the right-hander. Yeah, I haven't seen too many curveballs. A lot of those power two-seam fastballs for Jimmy Nelson. A lot of them on the inside corner, inner half. You know, weather like this, guys have a difficult time getting to that pitch in, and uh, the fastball has been his pitch tonight, and hadn't made too many mistakes with it. Chris Bryant double that is the only hit here for the Cubs. Ben Zobrist drew the walk in the second inning. But Nelson has been impressive here is Jorge Soler. He struck out his first trip. First pitch goes back to the bricks. Solaire getting the starting call and left. He is two for his last 21. You see the average is a low one, sub 200 for Solaire. That's over the last seven plus games now, the two for 21. And those uh, those things get into your head a little bit. I mean, if you don't remember what your batting average is, it doesn't take too much to take a look at this monster scoreboard out in left field with a big 189 staring in the face. Pretty big scoreboard out there. It is very big. That's a good two seamer right there. That's a good pitch. Here's what Rock's talking about. There it is, 189. You would think they'd take that down for the home guy, right? Put in that request. Say, we have a little technical issue with that board on yeah. my bat. Of course, for some of us, that was a pretty good year. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's so modest. Yeah, right. <laughs> the 300 year in that resume. Yeah. Three two pitch. So Larry mentioned he struck out in the first. Uh, he had a 30 percent strikeout rate a year ago. Still hit 262 with the 10 homers and drove in 47 battling through the injuries. Extended at bat here to lead off the fifth. It's number 13 in the at bat and Solaire draws a walk. Second walk issued by Nelson, leadoff base runner here for the Cubs. First time they've had that tonight. A couple of walks, six strikeouts for Jimmy. But he does have the bottom of the order to deal with. That's good news. Those leadoff walks can be killers. David Ross on deck. Addison Russell at the plate. He grounded to Rivera in the second. There's a ground ball past the diving Aaron Hill and a base hit. And the Cubs have a little something going here in the fifth. A walk and then a single. First time they've had two men on in one inning and it's back to back with nobody out. At some point these hitters are going to go up there looking for something in. Russell gets one just like uh, Chris Bryant did his last time up got one in ripped it down the line and Russell able to get one out of the reach of Hill. There's David Ross. Nelson has had a good combination of getting strikeouts and ground balls and see if he can get a ground ball from Ross with the pitcher on deck. Little threat going here for the Cubs in the bottom of the fifth. And Ross squares away and it's strike one. Interesting, you're bunting with the pitcher on deck. And here's Kyle Hendricks. 
activity down in that Cubs bullpen. It would be a short start for Kyle Hendricks. Oh, and one to Ross. And again, showing bunt. This time he was able to pull back one and one. And I guess if you're Joe Madden, you're thinking on a night like this, opportunities are going to be few and far between. So at the expense of taking out your starter very early, you try and you know get the lead. Ordinarily in the fifth inning, you would not bunt your number eight hitter with the pitcher on deck, but looks like they're going to pull him. And the bunt is laid down. Nelson, the play will be at first, recovering Rivera, so a sacrifice bunt. And a good one from Ross. One to four on the putout. So Joe Madden is going to go ahead and make the move now. Yeah, early hook for his starting pitcher. That's good bunt by Ross. They would have deadened it nicely. So Tommy Lastella will come in to pinch hit. By the way, that was Adam Warren warming up in the bullpen for the Cubs. Part of a very good pen that Chicago has. Now Derek Johnson, the Brewers pitching coach. Makes his way to the mound. Biggest threat of the night here for the Cubbies. Runners at second and third with one out. Walk to Soler, a single from Russell, and a sacrifice bunt from the catcher, David Ross. And Stella off to a really nice start this year, hitting three over 360. Two for four is a pinch hitter. Yeah, that start, Joe Madden, the story. In the uh, Tribune here, the Chicago Tribune, uh, Madden refers to Lestella as 3 a.m. That gets your attention. You think of so what is he like out in the town or whatever? He says, no, at 3 a.m. he could hit, he could he could roll out of bed, grab a bat, and get a hit. <laughs> at 3, 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> in December. With two strikes against him. Lucroy. Blocks a pitch in the dirt. So the night ends for Kyle Hendricks, Tommy LaStella. Takes over. There's a pitch hitter here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The former Brave traded to the Cubs in November of 2014. There was a time when those in Atlanta figured he might be the second baseman for a while. He took over for Dan Ugla when he was really struggling. So Lestella took over. A lot of minor league stops in his career. Nine of them, as a matter of fact. Worked his way up to the big leagues, showing a lot of patience at the plate. Very good at drawing walks. Trying to pick up at least one runner here for the Cubs as Nelson misses downstairs. Yeah, missed a lot of the season last year with a rib cage injury. But he's always been able to hit. A three hit day on Sunday against the Reds. Two and one the count. Ball away. Well, Sophia talked about it a little earlier tonight. But Nelson has given Craig Council quality starts, three of his first four outings, but and there is a point where things just start to turn. We're in the fifth here, so it's not quality start territory yet. Now trying to regroup. Ball four and the bases are loaded. Yeah, what were the breaking ball as if to say if I walk you, so what? I'm gonna set up the double play, but you got Dexter Fowler coming up, you can run. Tough guy to double up. Six, 
Valor, one of the hottest hitters in the league. In fact, only Daniel Murphy has been hotter in this opening month. He's 0 for 2 tonight. But there's a major chance here with the bases loaded and one out in the bottom of the fifth. Biggest trouble of the night facing Jimmy Nelson. Fowler a ground out and a strikeout. And he takes a strike. Good breaking pitch. Had him looking fastball, got over a slider. Good pitch. A little doubt in his mind. The 0 1. Scoots him back with a fastball. You know, like Chris Carter, Dexter Fowler has nine doubles, and you see what he has done with the bases loaded in his career. Here's Carter. A doubles machine, Carter, and likewise Fowler for the Cubs. A check swing and a foul back. Start him out with a breaking pitch and then back to back fastballs. Struck him out his last time up. Could use it again. Nelson has struck out six so far. A ball, two strikes to the Cubs center fielder. Here comes the one two sharply hit but just foul. And yeah, waiting for that pitch on the inside corner. I'm not even sure it was a strike but. Ballard turned on it just missed the line. Yep, coming inside and. You know, Fowler got the bad head out on that pitch. Matchup continues. Boy, Cubs have hit a couple of two or three sharp ground balls. One was fair, the last inning from Bryant, but they just missed on a couple of others. But wind kicking up, so Fowler needs to step away, blowing right into the face of the hitters. Nelson brings the one two again. A lot of these Cubs hitters, Fowler's good at working into counts. He has walked 14 times so far this season. Cubs have drawn more walks than anyone in the National League. There's Hayward on deck. Busy inning here for Jimmy Nelson. Pitch count approaching 90. This will be the 23rd pitch here in the inning. And there's a fly ball hit back into center field. Room for Neuenhuis. He'll make the catch, but it's deep enough to score a run. Cubs on the board. This game is tied. Yeah. Soler is in. And not tonight. That ball's not getting out of here tonight. I think the crowd thought he might have got one, but good luck trying to buck that win. It's coming in from left. I think Fowler thought he hit it a lot better than he actually did. Just not going anywhere. It did sound good though. Just died out there in center field. Yeah, New and Ice had a lot of room to make the catch, so it's a sacrifice fly. All the runners advance. Russell at third, Lestella at second. Two men out for Jason Hayward. He is hitless in two trips. Took the call third strike and grounded to second. Both of the runs in this good pitching matchup coming via the sacrifice fly. Aaron Hill for the Brewers and now Dexter Fowler for the Cubs.
Here's the 1 0. And you don't really want to you know pitch too carefully to Jason Hayward. You got Chris Bryant on deck. Let's see what they elect to do on a 2 0 count. They were hitting 253. And Nelson pours a strike in there at a fastball. They got to go after this guy. This is the guy you want, I think. I don't think you want to deal with Bryant with the bases loaded. We'll hear that part of the order. Bryant on deck. Rizzo follows. Nelson trying to keep the damage to one run. But the Cubs have made him work here in this fifth inning. Three balls, one strike. Vera and the inning is over. Well, the Cubs get a hit. A couple of walks, sacrifice fly, and through five, we have a tie game at Wrigley. Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. Cold nights here along the lake. Lake Michigan here, Chicago, the beautiful skyline. Tied at one as we move to the top half of the sixth with Wrigley Field and now Adam Warren on in relief for the Cubs. Yeah we talked about how good the bullpen has been. I mean that's was really the only question mark going into the season for the Cubs the bullpen but they've been terrific. Now Warren spent the last four years with the Yankees and now with the Cubs off to a terrific start has not allowed an earned run. He'll face Jimmy Nelson. Kyle Hendricks five innings of two hit one run ball. Nelson did a good job of getting through that bottom half of the fifth. The Cubs got their first run of the night, but they had the bases loaded and one out. It got a sack fly from Dexter Fowler. That was it. Yeah, that's a good job by Jimmy there. When you talk about the top of this order coming up with the bases loaded. 0 2 pitch to Nelson. As Rock said Warren had been with the Yankees last year started 17 times he appeared in 43 games a year before it was all out of the bullpen. And that is his role here 
with this team on this night in this season. Nelson goes down swing and there's out number one. And not a hard throw. He sinks it. He cuts it. Curveball and a change up and kind of moves the baseball around a little bit. You know, 93 appears a lot quicker to hitters on a night like this. Yeah, 93 looks like 98, right? Right, it does. Yeah, especially when it's in on you. Here's Domingo Santana. Doesn't sound like the weather's going to warm up a whole lot here for the remainder of this series. Back here tomorrow night and then Thursday afternoon to wrap it up. One and one to Santana. Struck out in the first and a ground ball to short in the third. Been good at the top of the order for the Brewers. Came into the game with a 359 on base percentage. A run on two hits for both teams tonight. Errorless baseball here so far. Warren brings the one two. Santana stays in there. Interesting you have Carlos Torres getting loose in the Brewers bullpen. He's not really in a hurry to get ready after Jimmy Nelson started the inning with a strikeout. I guess if uh, you're figuring on going to the bullpen you go to a pinch hitter. Of course the Brewers bench is very short tonight. Scooter Jeanette probably not available. So really you only have three available Presley. Braun in Maldonado. And Colin Moss, the pinch hit, switch hitter. 2 2 pitch. And Santana extending this at bat. Brewers got their run in the second. Chris Carter a walk. Kirk Newenheis a double. Aaron Hill a sacrifice fly. And Dexter Fowler sack fly with the bases loaded. The other run. So last year the Cubs controlled the series as they rolled. As the weather warmed, but the Brewers got the better of the Cubs the first two series that they had down here. Took two out of three, and the same story a few days later at Miller Park. There's a bouncing ball to Addison Russell. There's out number two. Well, that brings us to tonight's time of the game winner DJ's Corner Bar and Event Hall in Bancroft. Wisconsin if they call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning they get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Lite beer pen this offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite Bancroft Wisconsin we just cover the state yeah it's covering the state here's Jonathan VR Couple of ground balls from the shortstop, both times to the second baseman, Ben Zobrist. Warren drafted by the Cubs in the fourth round. They make that by the Yankees in the fourth round. 2009 draft, played his college ball at North Carolina. He is a native of that state. And they are down to ball two strikes. Pretty good off speed pitch right there. Kyle Hendricks started. He went five. A 
one two in the dirt. Warren 28 years old. He's actually born in Alabama but went to high school in New Bern North Carolina before becoming a Tar Heel. Four years with the big club at the Yankees before the move with the swap with Starlin Castro. The bullpen that has certainly not been overworked through the first 19 games, but Joe Madden turning to it in the sixth inning tonight. They have barely 40 innings of work coming into tonight. Starting rotation, 125 innings. 16 quality starts. I didn't miss by much. Nope. Just off the edge. And a full count to Jonathan VR. Warren retired the first two. Nelson and Santana. All bundled up tonight. Some more than others. <laughs> Just the eyes showing for Jonathan VR. Got the hot coffee going and lots of layers. The Packer Bear weather here. Yeah, right. They used to play football here at Wrigley. Yes, they did. Gail Sayers, Dick Butkus. Yeah. Those two would not recall that. They would not have been here for those games. They had a college game here a few years ago. There's a bouncing ball back to the mound. And Adam Warren retires the Brewers 1 2 3 in the sixth. If we stay tied at one. and Cobbs even at one as we head to the bottom of the sixth and offensively Michael outfielder Michael Reed has reached base in each of his last 27 Pacific Coast League games dating back to last season that is the longest active streak in the league so you see his numbers with triple A Colorado Springs Sky Sox last night he went one for three and on the season he's out batting nearly 300 five RBIs and 12 walks. All right, Sophia thanks another one of those prospects rock yep, right handed hitter pretty good outfielder. We saw a little bit of him last September. Part of that Biloxi group last year that came up. There's Bryant leading things off. About the middle of April when Bryant made his Cubs debut last year. 
Rams, the much talked about group that Bryant was a big part of. And Brewers trying to stock their system and are doing so with very good talent right now. Throughout the organization. What do you have? 10, 11 home runs last spring? Something he, like that. He did, yeah. He was hitting bomb after bomb. Setting him, send him down, and he wasn't down there long. There's a bouncing ball. Aaron Hill on the charge, but cannot come up with it. That'll be an error charge to Chris Bryant. And that's how the bottom of the sixth begins. Yeah, another leadoff base runner. Leadoff walk came around to score last inning, and now a leadoff error. Aaron Hill coming in hard, just couldn't get a hold of it. Pretty easy play, actually. Just kind of closed the glove a little bit too soon, and Chris Bryant reaches first. Yeah, as much as I would want to say error on Chris Bryant, right. he's on the uh, the plus end of it is that's his counterpart, Aaron Hill. Error on the ball hit by yep. Chris Bryant. Yes. So here's Anthony Rizzo. Ground out and a strikeout. Lucroy down into the dirt for the block. Rizzo just on the south side now of 200 with the average, but you see the run producing capabilities with the eight homers, the 21 RBIs. Homered five times in the last five games, including a couple on Sunday against the Reds. He has driven in 10 runs over his last five. And just dares you to come inside. He is right on top of home plate. He's got those hands hanging right over that inside corner. This is hit well down the line and right, but that wind's going to keep pushing it, and it's well foul. And still can handle that pitch in on him. And a lot of the time, he's going to be able to keep it fair. Wasn't able to do it that time. Good thing. That ball had plenty of distance. A ball, two strikes to Rizzo. Chris Bryant gets on to lead off this inning in error. And here's Bryant, or Rizzo rather. His batting average on balls in play coming into this game just 122. Yeah, which does lead you to believe he has hit into some bad luck. I mean, putting the ball in play, but still not really finding the hole. Eight home runs. Only Bryce Harper has more in the National League with nine. Two balls, two strikes to Rizzo. How's that straight back? He's extending the at bat. There you see the pitch count for Nelson now at 102. Man, that's why you have Carlos Torres up in the bullpen. I mean, you got to figure that uh, the Brewers don't want that pitch count to get too high. This will be the busiest night of the young season for Nelson at 102 pitches and six innings of work against the Astros on April 10th. Rizzo with a liner, left center field. Newenheis has it tracked. And at the edge of the track, he'll make the catch for out number one. Yeah, maybe on a different night. That might have a different result, but that's a pretty stiff win that he's bucking out there in the left field. And right in front of the warning track. 
Back to our CarSoup.com trivia question. Which two managers led the Cubs to back-to-back postseason appearances? And there you go. Lou Pinella and Frank Chance. Yeah, way back. With tinkers to Evers to Chance way back when. Frank Chance was a player manager back in those days. You put yourself in the lineup. I wish I could have done that. No, no memories of that era. It was Ben Zobrist. Only what you read. <laughs> yeah, that player manager thing has its advantages. It does, doesn't it? Of course, you have to be pretty good yeah. before you become player manager That's in order true. to be able to put yourself in the lineup. That's true. Where do I want to hit tonight? Yeah. And what I think I'll pinch hit for you right now. <laughs> Take a seat. Pete Rose is a player manager. Yes, he was. Frank Robinson. Most recently, uh, Pete Rose. Mm -hmm. Frank before him. Joe Madden. Second year with the Cubs. Nelson with a 1 1. That is ripped, but out of play. I'll tell you, Zobra's not having any problems with that fastball in. Second time he's turned on one like that. Just missed the right field line his last time up. He has walked, he has flagged to left. He's drawn 15 walks this season. A ball, two strikes. Bryant, the runner at first. And another block for Lucroy. Quick road trip here for the Brewers. Three in Chicago, then back home. As for Zobris to the Cubs, 16 of the next 19 here at Wrigley Field. Had 13 road games already, and the Cubs have won 10 of those. Pass ball away. Man, yeah, Joe Torre was also a player manager. Three in recent memory. There you go. I don't know how we get off on that tangent, but. <laughs> Runner goes, the pitch is ball four. And that might be the end of the line for Jimmy Nelson. Here comes Craig Council. And it'll be five and a third for Jimmy Nelson tonight. He pitched well. Cubs touched him up in the fifth, had the bases loaded and one out. Scored just a run. But here in inning number six, leadoff man Bryant reaches on an error. A walk to Zobris, a fly ball in between from Rizzo. 1-1 one, one to, one, one to score here in the sixth.
six. The Cubs have something going in a tie game at Wrigley Field. Jimmy Nelson with a good night's work, five and a third, but a walk and a runner reaching on an error. There you see the night for Nelson is busiest night of the year, 100 night, 109 pitches. A good outing for him as he makes way for Carlos Torres. And Carlos Torres uh, started out a little bit uh, shaky, but boy, he's been throwing the baseball pretty well. And last pitch on Saturday against the Phillies at Miller Park, couple innings, gave up a couple of hits and a run. And he's got one out and a couple of men on in the bottom half of this Cubs order coming up. He will face Jorge Soler. Took a call third strike in the second. Walked and scored in the fifth. And a big swing but does not get it. Soler with a couple of home runs as you see this season. Ryan the runner at second, Zobrist at first. Another threat here for the Cubs. Three straight innings they have threatened. Back to the fourth, a one out double from Bryant, but he was left stranded. Had him loaded with one out, scored a run in the fifth, and now two on and one out here in inning number six. This is hit in the air to right field, shallow, Santana. Two men out. And that's the thing, I mean, fifth inning, a lot of base runners, only one hit. You know, the Cubs have men on base here. They haven't been able to scratch out a hit this inning. It was an air and a walk. A leadoff walk last inning. The reason why Jimmy Nelson gave up the run. And a leadoff air in this inning. The Cubs have something going. And Torres and out away from stopping the threat. Here's Addison Russell. He single to left his last trip. Which was in the last inning. Both Nelson and Hendricks are gone. Battle of the bullpens now. A fly ball right center field. Santana will have to play it. Goes all the way to the wall. Neuenheis runs it down. A run will score. And the Cubs now grab the lead. On a triple, a two run triple from Addison Russell. Bryant and Zobrist are in. It's 3 1 Cubs. Now the error and the walk come around to score. Boy, all three runs. Lead off walk, lead off air in this inning, and another walk. And Addison Russell has been getting about as good a swing as anybody in this Cubs lineup. He's got two hits now and a couple of big RBIs with two outs. That hurts. Fastball out over the plate, and he drills it out there into the gap. So you close the book on Jimmy Nelson five and a third three runs allowed but just one earned. David Ross goes the other way that'll carry into the seats one and one. Well, he pitched well but now needs his team to rally save him from getting the loss. Ross swings and misses. Chris Bryant reached on an error to start the inning. A walk and then a two run double from Addison Russell, who came into the game hitting 217. 
The one two. Yeah, that's the thing about good offensive teams. It's somebody different every night. Yeah, tonight it's Addison Russell getting it done. Big night for him. Two for three. Two balls, two strikes to the Cubs catcher. Laid down a sacrifice bunt in the fifth, grounded to short in the third. And that is strike three called. So the inning is over, but the Cubs get a couple of runs. Addison Russell. With a triple to right center, it scores two and it gives the Cubs a three to one lead. Let's take a look at tonight's game summary presented by Toyota. Brewers got on the board in the second inning in this Aaron Hill sacrifice fly that scored Chris Carter. He led off the inning with a walk. Jimmy Nelson was good, five and a third, giving up just a couple of hits and only one earned run. But the big blow to this point, first a sacrifice fly has tied the game, and there's the big blow to this point. Addison Russell, a two out, two run triple to right center. And that has given the Cubs a three to one lead. Yeah, two one earned run. Well, you just can't make those kind of mistakes, allowing extra base runners for with a team like the Cubs, the way their offense is. Three, four, and five hitters in the Brewers order against Adam Warren. Out there for his second inning. Luke Croy, a ground ball to second and a fly ball to right. Eight game hitting streak for Luke Croy coming into this game. Brewers back into comeback mode here. Two zero pitch. Lucroy looks at a strike. A lot of fastballs from Adam Warren. It's two seamers, four seamers. He's also got that cut fastball, change up to go with it. Luke Croy with a fly ball to center and Wynn knocks that back handled by Fowler for out number one. Here comes Chris Carter. Look at your home run power ball count for Chris Carter this season five of them so far. Going the other way on most of them that was a line drive that just roped out of Miller Park. And pulled one over the weekend against the Philadelphia Phillies.
Butter with a walk in the second, and he scored on the Aaron Hill sack fly, and then a single to center for Carter in the fourth. And Carter's given the Brewers everything they could possibly have asked of him so far. Good on base percentage. He's got the average up and doing a pretty good job over at first base. He's picked a couple of tough, tough throws from the infield and hitting over 300. The last Brewer to reach off of Cubs pitching. Combination of Hendricks and Warren now have retired eight straight. Two and one to the first baseman. This will carry out of play. Tough night for all the hitters. Cubs with three hits, the Brewers with two. And Warren misses with a fastball. It's funny you talk to Jerry Augustine. He thinks the hitters have the advantage. <laughs> Spoken like a pitcher. Talk to a hitter. A pitcher's got the advantage. <laughs> Carter strikes out swinging. Out number two in the seventh. Well you definitely could make the argument either way it's hard to get loose and then hard to stay loose. Well, notice all but, the fastballs that have been thrown in this game. Yep. I mean you talk about on both sides. I mean it's hard when you have you know that baseball gets real slick when it's cool and it's windy. And plus your fingers I mean you don't get a real good grip on that baseball so you're better off just throwing fastballs. And fastballs into these hitters. Notice that triple by Addison Russell where the fastball was from Jimmy out away from him right much easier to get to the change up a little off speed pitch Here's at the plate presented by blaze pizza Kirk new and ice with a double in the second inning went off a two hit day on Sunday against the Phillies two strike pitch fastball missed upstairs. Something going here with two outs, bases empty. It's tough to come by both sides. Adam Warren brings the 2 2, and that will end the inning. New and Ice knew it. Warren strikes out two, bottom of the seventh we go. Cubs lead 3 to 1.
here at Wrigley Field. It's Ryan Braun Bobblehead Day at Miller Park this Sunday afternoon. As the Brewers host the Marlins and all fans get a Ryan Braun home run leader bobblehead courtesy of U.S. Cellular. Reserve your spot today at Brewers.com. Blaine Boyer on the mound for the Brewers third pitcher used by Craig Council tonight. Yeah, good numbers for Blaine out of the bullpen eighth appearance of 216 earned run average. Boyer last pitched on Friday against the Phillies and retired all six batters that he faced. And that included a strikeout he's been unscored upon in six of his seven appearances this year. Yeah, part of that good Brewers bullpen. He will face Javier Baez. Pinch hitting. It's 9 1 and 2 in the Cubs order in the bottom of the seventh. And Baez smacks one to center. Neuenheis will play it on a hop. And Javier Baez off the bench with a pinch single to start the bottom half of inning number seven. The yeah, Cubs pinch hitters have been uh, played an active role tonight. Yeah, the Listella walk in the fifth inning that ultimately ended up with a run scoring in that inning. And now a base hit. Joe Madden's having a good time this year, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Every time you get a shot of him, he's joking around, having a good time. Why not, right? Yeah, well, they're 14 and five, and life's good. Yeah. You know, his introductory news conference, he was offering to buy around for everybody. Here's Dexter Fowler. Sacrifice flies last trip. He got the Cubs. On the board, in inning number five, and they took the lead in the sixth. Had a career high 17 homers a year ago. Word is had a big off-season program. Gain some good weight, a little stronger. Baez is running, pitch is taken, throw to second, is right on the money. Out at second is Baez. Yeah, just continues to throw the baseball well. Eighth guy that he's caught this year. Well, Joe Madden wanted to take a look at it. Well, your Baez is he, trying to I think he sell came it. Up, came off the bag, right? Yeah. Well, Baez is trying to sell it that, they, that he missed the tag. But then he came off the bag, right? Right there. Right there. I mean, there he, he gets him. Looks like they're going to check it out. They are going to review it. I think uh, VR does miss him right here. He gets the right arm in there, but watch, he comes off the bag. The hand comes off, and I think before the foot was on there. I have a, we'll see. I mean, I'll tell you, it's a shame because he was dead to rights. See right there, he's got the he's got the tag on there before the foot comes back. I think that he he was safe and then he was out because VR kept the the tag on him. Right there, he's safe, but the tag stays on him and the hand comes off before the foot hits the bag. We'll see what they say in New York. Ball on the field was out. And this era of replay, you are taught to keep that tag applied. And VR did a pretty good job of it. It did look like he was safe, but then he took his hand came off before the foot hit second base. But we'll see what they say in New York. And what a throw again by Lucroy. Just. How about, the, how about the slide though from Baez? That was, I mean, that yes. was a beauty. I Good mean, that point. was a really nice slide. Yeah, it looked like initially that it was VR was close to applying the tag on just the tip of a couple of fingers on the left hand of Baez, but he was claiming he was able to, to pull away in time and then reached out. With the right hand to secure the the base and Lucroy's Lucroy's throw beat him by a good three feet. I mean, it wasn't even close. It's just a matter of whether VR was able to get the tag on him at some point. 
when Baez wasn't on the bag. Now we had a review on Sunday that took a bit more than three minutes on a caught stealing that went the Brewers' way. Baez trying to get second stolen here, but you see the original call. So now the question is: Is there enough evidence to overturn it? Larry Vanover is the crew chief, and it will be overturned. So yeah, it was a heck of a job by Baez to avoid the tag. Well, apparently, uh, VR did not have the tag on him when the hand left the bag. Look at this. I mean, right there, he keeps the tag on, I think, but who knows? Mm. Call overturned. 0 oh 2, the count to Fowler. With Baez, the runner at second. Now to me I'm not sure how you give a stolen bait that's got to be an error. Yeah with a throw that good I mean a throw that good beat him by a ton and how do you get a stolen base that should be an error. You don't get the tag on him right there watch the foot yeah. that's the hand leaves foot is back and who knows. Look like maybe just the wrist of VR not the dead to right yeah. ends up being safe. Wow. Two balls, two strikes to Fowler. Stays in there. He's homered three times as Fowler. He now has 14 RBIs in the year. Came over to this franchise via a trade from the Astros in January of 2015 and then re upped when it looked like he was going to go elsewhere. Strike is called and Fowler will take a seat. Out number one in the seventh. Now, getting back to that stolen base, I mean, that's, uh, that's the risk you take when you reach, you know, for the. Guy sliding into the bag. The idea is to put the glove right in front of the bag and then tag whatever's closest. When you reach, you give a guy an opportunity to do exactly what Baez did. So we'll see if the Brewers can get away with this here. One out, one on for Jason Hayward. He is hitless in three trips. He struck out and he is twice grounded out to second. Jimmy Nelson went five and a third. Carlos Torres two thirds of an inning. Nelson gave up just two hits. Three three runs but two were unearned. Oh and one to Hayward. It's a five game hitting streak coming into this game. David Rackley says Hayward held up one and one. And a good slider down and in. That bar has been good. We mentioned it. Six of his seven appearances have been scoreless. Doesn't throw hard, but has, has the ability to you know, get his pitches on the corners and keep it down for the most part. Don Roster invitee. Making good on his chance. Ready to bring the break even pitch. Lifted shallow left. This is Flores. And there's out number two. Baez remains at second. Here's Chris Bryant. Chris 
struck out doubled and reached on an error that started what turned into a two run sixth inning. Cubs first round draft pick in 2013 the number two pick overall that year. Mark Appel the pitcher. Taken by the Astros. And since. He's moved to Philadelphia. One and oh to Brian. Hey, Brian drove in 99 last year, but he too was prone to strike out. In fact, he struck out more than anyone in the National League last year, 199 times. But the Cubs took the trade off there, a 275 yeah. hitter and 26 homers. You don't mind the strikeouts when you get that kind of run production. Take that any day. As we mentioned, he's at third tonight, but. You can see him in left field. There's Anthony Rizzo on deck. Three balls, no strikes to Bryant. And that's a four pitch walk. And the runners at first and second now for the Cubs. With two men out. And now Boyer will have to deal with Anthony Rizzo. Five walks now issued by the Brewers. Two of them at this point have come around to score. And the first four given up by Jimmy Nelson. Take a look at Rizzo's night. And a strike to Rizzo. Jonathan Lucroy with a perfect peg down to second on the Baez steal attempt, but Baez able to avoid the tag. And then a walk to Bryant. That's how the Cubs have him on first and second with two men out here in the seventh inning. Count is even. And first two pitches away to Anthony Rizzo, and he's on the top of home plate for a reason. He likes it in there. Does not have a hit the left field. He's been pulling everything. And thus the Brewers adjust defensively. Yeah, but he did fly out deep in the left center his last time up. Different night. It might have had a different result. You see where Boyer has worked him so far. Fox tracks. 1-1 one, one pitch. Worked him away again. Big part of the game here on a night where it is tough for the offenses. Careful with Rizzo, but we have no slouch on deck and Ben Zobrist. Here comes the 2 1. There's a ground ball, and that's going to be stopped by Rivera, but it's in shallow right. A run will score, and Rizzo comes all the way to second. And nobody there. You had the Brewers moving around in that infield way deep. Everybody went for the baseball. Nobody went to second base. I guess if somebody had to go there, it should have been Carter. 
I mean, that's the thing about all this shifting. I mean, guys are in different positions and you know, not sure who's supposed to go after. Watch everybody going after the baseball. Nobody at second base. The run is in. The throw goes into third base, and it really wouldn't have mattered. I mean, Rizzo would have ended up at second base anyway because nobody was there. Will be ruled a single, run scoring single. But the Cubs get another on the board now, and they lead by three. Two runners in scoring position for Ben Zobrist. Another mistake cost the Brewers a run. And not being able to apply that tag to Baez, and he ends up at second base and comes around to score. Cubs have put the leadoff man on in each of the last three innings and have scored in each of the last three. Credit Baez for making VR miss on that tag attempt. And boy, you're trying to keep it from getting worse. A lot of pitches needed for Blaine Boyer here in this seventh inning. Here's the 2 1. There's a ground ball, and Rivera, the diving stop, and the throw to first is in time. Ooh, big time play by Yadiel Rivera at second to keep his team within striking distance. This is how you save a run or two. Move to the eighth inning with the Cubs leading 4 to 1. The Cubs leading the Brewers four to one. I think another run in the seventh inning. Let's check out Miller Lights. What's on tap? Right back here tomorrow night. Taylor Youngman on the mound against Jake Arrieta, who is as good as it gets. That ERA. His last outing was a no hitter against Cincinnati. Our coverage tomorrow starts at six thirty right here. On Fox Sports Wisconsin. And Taylor Young is going to have to turn things around because I don't think the margin is going to be too, uh, <laughs> going to be pretty thin with that uh, right hand of the Cubs have going tomorrow. Baez at third, they move Bryant from third to left, and Pedro Strope on here in the eighth inning. Strope's been very good. And 123 earned run average in eight appearances, no walks. That's the key for him. Actually, one walk, nine strikeouts. Yeah, throwing strikes is his only issue. He has had he had a terrific year last year. 76 games he appeared in last year, a career high. Facing Aaron Hill here in the top of the eighth inning.
Cubs have scored in each of the last three innings. Getting to Blaine Boyer in the bottom half of the seventh. And mistakes have hurt the Brewers tonight for sure. Error of missed tag. Ended up costing the Brewers three runs. Full count to Hill here leading off the eighth. And Aaron Hill draws a walk. So a good start for the Brewers here in the top half of inning number eight. Yeah, Strope going gone over seven innings, seven and a third innings without a walk, and he walks his first hitter here tonight. Well, let's see if the Brewers can take advantage of a leadoff walk. Carter had a leadoff walk in the second inning. He came around to score. That seems to be a a pattern in this game for both teams. Yeah, it really does. Here's Ramon Flores, and that's going to get by David Ross and go to the bricks as advancing will be Aaron Hill on a wild one uncorked by Strope. Strope throws hard. He's got a very good slider to go with it. And that one, I'm not sure what that was, but bouncing way in front of home plate, no chance for David Ross. And here comes Basio. Most of Chris Basio's visits are normally one-sided conversations. <laughs> He's talking, everybody's shaking their head yes. Yep, there he is. That's exactly what happened. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, coach. He doesn't mess around. Yep. Former Brewer doing a great job with this Cubs staff. Chris Basio. Ramon Flores, a ground ball to short, a ground ball to third. That's been his night so far. Stroop in there with a slider for strike one. It's the Brewers hitters trying to get deep into counts again. Good at that more often than not this season. And the fastball is in there to even the count. Even velocities are down tonight, you know, given the weather. 93, 94 for Strope. He's usually a few miles an hour higher than that. Two balls, two strikes. Flores reaches out and taps it to Rizzo unassisted. For out number one as Hill moves to third. So one out, a runner at third as Colin Walsh will come in. And he'll pinch hit. RBI chance here for Walsh. Pinch hitting for Rivera in the top of the eighth. And there you see the one hit. That was against Irvin Santana. Yeah, that came, uh, you know, in Minnesota. So got the monkey off his back. He did get the hit. Now it's time to get a few in bunches here. That was one week ago today the target field. Two and one the count. Aaron Hill started this inning by drawing a walk advanced on a wild pitch and then advanced again on the ground ball off the bat of Flores. Out in front. Two and two. Strope, the third pitcher used by the Cubs tonight. Hendricks went five. Adam Warren went two. 
Now it's Strobe's turn in the eighth inning. Mm. Just off the plate, full count. No, I tell you, it just did miss the outside corner, but too close. Strobe with a 3 2, and he did he hold up? He did. Ball four. Second walk of the inning given up by Pedro Strobe. Well, now it's time to have him pay. You got Ryan Braun in the on deck circle, and they're pretty close. It could have gone either way, but Brewers get the benefit of the doubt, and here comes Ryan Braun. Maybe to tie this baby up. Yeah, he has been one red hot hitter, a seven game hitting streak, 13 for 25 in that span, including a couple of home runs. And terrific numbers against the Chicago Cubs. Scheduled day off until now for Ryan Braun. Hill at third. Walsh at first. With one out of the eighth. And Braun drives one to right field. Hayward can't get it. It's going to go to the corner. Hill will score. Walsh around third. He's coming home. Here's the throw. Not in time. Two run double from Ryan Braun. Who stays red hot on a cold night? Yep, a double on the first pitch, a fastball out away from him, and slices it away from Jason Hayward. And now the Brewers right back in it. So Craig Council used his big chip exactly when he needed to. And there's your tying run at second base, out over the plate. Mistake by Strobe after walking Walsh. You figured that he was going to get something to hit first pitch. Strope has been working behind in the count and he rips it the right. There you go. Tying run at second for Domingo Santana. Two run double off the bat of Braun. 17 RBIs now for Ryan Braun. Check it out. Let's it travel and he hits him as hard as you can about his Hard as a right handed hitter can to the opposite field. A little bit of slice on that one because of the wind. Santana, a big cut on a 95 mile an hour fastball. Santana has hit safely in each of his last five games, looking to extend it here. But he's down a ball, two strikes. The Brewers battling back here as we get late at Wrigley Field. One two pitch. Well, this Cubs bullpen has been. Very good this season, but the Brewers getting to it here in this eighth inning. And that just misses inside. Boy, that didn't miss by much. Looked like uh, Ross wanted that when he was sitting up in the outside corner. And that one looked like it caught the edge, but he was sitting away, and a lot of times you don't get that call. Bronze on the move, and Santana swings and fouls. He had himself a jump too. And when you have a guy out there in the mound, pitcher has struggling to throw strikes, he forgets about those base runners. Strope again, ready with a 2 2 pitch. And Santana goes down swinging. Backup slider. Stayed on the inside corner up, didn't break. Setting up outside strokes all over the place today, but he got away with it. There's a slider. 
you get the spin it doesn't do anything and Santana swings at a pitch out of the strike zone. So two men out the tying run at second. Ryan Braun with a two run double. It's his first hit against Strope the seventh time he's faced him in his career and didn't waste any time did he I no. mean he went right after that first fastball and hit a rocket down the right field line and Joe Madden is going to make another move here as the wheels turning in the eighth inning Ryan brought a two run double Travis Wood will be coming in we'll tell you about him as we continue it's four three Cubs here in the eighth. As his team within a run Cubs making a, another pitching change we'll tell you about that in a moment but let's take a look at what Braun has done here in this opening month of the season guy coming off back surgery and not in the lineup tonight but a big pinch two run double been good and among the best actually with the bat here in the first three plus weeks Yeah, just trying to keep him healthy and uh, came up big when Craig Council needed him off the bench as Travis Wood takes over 10th appearance he's been scoreless in eight of his first nine you can see a 338 earned run average and that turns VR around he'll now bat right handed trying to drive in that tying run is Jonathan VR at a swing and a miss. It's better from the right side. 273 coming into this game. And this has popped up. Zobrist will call for it. And the inning is over. And we still have a game at Wrigley Field, courtesy of that man, Ryan Braun. A big two run double coming off the bench, ripping one down the line and right. And we move to the bottom of the eighth. The Cubs lead is one.
Timothy we got to show us a ball game four to three Cubs and just a reminder that through midnight tonight you can get four dollar and twenty cent tickets for the Brewers upcoming series against the Angels Monday May 2nd through Wednesday the 4th courtesy of US Cellular go to Brewers.com slash flash sale good deal sweet Colin Walsh pinch hits in the top of the eighth stays in the game at second base is Matt Caesar now into pinch hit here for the Cubbies. Caesar, 26 year old. And he'll face Michael Blazik. Caesar trying to lay one down, fouls it back. And Blazik pitched against the Phillies on Sunday, an inning of work, a couple of hits and a run. Brewers able to close it within one, and Craig Council likes to bring one of his big guns out of the bullpen to keep the Cubs off the board. Bottom half of the Cubs batting order up. Caesar a good rip and a foul. Played baseball and football at Villanova. Joe Madden put him in the lineup right after. The Villanova basketball team won the national championship and said, well, they just, his alma mater just won a title last night, so I'll put him in the lineup. That was the advanced metrics that went into that. And there's a line drive single to left for Caesar. That's so how the bottom of the eighth starts for the Cubbies. A couple of bench players that uh, Joe Madden's been using quite a bit. You know, Caesar and Lestella, both of them hitting over 300. Pitch hitters have been pretty good for the Cubs tonight. Walking two hits. And again, the leadoff man is on. Four straight inning in the first three, they scored. Innings five, six, and seven. Here's Addison Russell. Russell had a huge two run triple in the sixth. They have had the lead since. They gave them a 3-1 lead at that point. Russell came in hitting 217 with a two-hit night, single and a triple. First of three in this series at Wrigley Field. Back here tomorrow night and then Thursday afternoon. They have to do it something around here. <laughs> Not happy unless you're angry about something. All right. Caesar has one stolen base in as many attempts. They're foul around here because their Blackhawks got eliminated last yeah. night. Yeah, kind of a, a bummer. It's yeah. Cedar, big Blackhawks fan, and I didn't feel like I should mention it to him today, but I know it was hurting. You didn't want to pile on? No. St. Louis Blues took him in seven. We will now play Mark Vittorio's Dallas Stars. Our director, Mark Vittorio. Good to have him back. Absolutely. Producer Brent Reeland. I guess good to have him back, too. <laughs> Didn't think about that one a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, Brent wasn't going as long as uh, Mark. Vito's year round, man. Look at those Dallas Stars games. Two strikes and nothing to Addison Russell. There's a ground ball to short, and they'll get the force over at second VR to Walsh. That's a nice that's a play. Light. Well, that's a good play on both ends. I mean, for VR to be able to get rid of it that quickly, and Colin Walsh knew he wasn't going to be able to turn a double play, acting as if he was a first baseman, able to 
pick a tough hop over at second base in between hops so good job by the middle of the Brewers infield to get that out. We'll see if they can get a more serviceable ground ball here with David Ross. And hit into a double play. Also for two a sacrifice bunt in the fifth. A good one on a cold night here in Chicago. Cubs four runs on six hits three runs three hits for the Brewers. Oh and two the count. That Caesar the runner at first. Ross won't bite on a pitch away. Yeah, good velocity that time by Blazik off the outside corner at 95. One of the best fastballs we've seen tonight. As we mentioned in the conditions that we're in, fastballs are down a tick or two. But not on that last offering from Blazik. And Ross reaches out and just punches one into right field. Addison Russell over at second now. So runners at first and second with one out here in the eighth. And that's about all he could have done with that. I mean, just kind of flicked it out, out there in the right field. Good slider. And David Ross ends up with a base hit. His first hit of the night. Pretty good piece of hitting just to get a bat on it. But he ends up getting a base hit. So a little something going again. It's Cubs getting their leadoff man on. Matt Caesar were erased on a fielder's choice, but now we have Russell at second, Ross at first, and Javier Baez, who had a pinch single in the last inning. I have just activated last week coming back from a thumb injury a four game rehab assignment at triple A Iowa. Her player with a lot of versatility. They like him over a third but he can play all over. As infield for Joe Madden's team. Yeah, very good defender, and he's been swinging a bat this year. Lazik brings the 1 0. Carry out a play. Last year, most of his season was in Iowa, AAA, but then did play a lot down the stretch for the Cubs. And a big three run homer in the divisional series in game four of that series with the Cardinals. Blazing with a 1 1, and Baez right through it. More fastballs for Blazik tonight than we normally see. It's usually curveballs and sliders. Fastballs for show, and everybody throwing more fastballs tonight. Blazik a strike away from getting out of trouble here in the eighth. Here comes the one two. Got him swinging. That was a good slider that time. 
over the plate but down out of the strike zone and he gets his punch out yeah, out number two here in the inning nice that's perfect now the fun begins the top of the Cubs order coming up not out of trouble with Baez but still not out of trouble here in the frame two outs two on for Dexter Fowler Fowler's still hitless tonight. A sacrifice fly in the fifth. Curve is in to even the count. Still a terrific average for Fowler. Came in number two in the National League in batting average. And Blazik ahead of ball two strikes. Brewers scoring twice in the eighth inning. To make this a one run game. Blazik and company trying to keep it that way here in the home half of the eighth. Here comes the one two. Get back into the bullpen now as Blazik. You have the Blazik Thornburg Jeffress combo. Blazik's turn right now. See if the Brewers can rally and set it up for Jeffress. First things first, get through this inning. They have full count. They got ahead quickly one and two but just haven't been able to put them away. Now the runners will be on the move. Here comes the three two and the bases are loaded. Another breaking pitch. This doesn't have the command of that breaking ball that he normally does. Derek Johnson on his way out. And he got Jason Hayward coming up with the bases loaded. Derek Johnson wanting to take no chances here. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Sam Freeman. He's going to start to get loose. Probably getting ready for Anthony Rizzo, but I think the horse might be out of the barn by the time he gets up. These two have matched up just once. Blazik was able to retire him, but that's. That's it. That's the career sample size right there. 0 for 1. Bases loaded with two men out here in the eighth. Missing with a fastball. There's Chris Bryant. Lazy. Will do everything he can to avoid him here in this inning. And there's a ground ball to Carter. And he'll feed Blazik. And they get out of trouble here in inning number eight. Jonathan Lucroy will lead things off as this game moves to the ninth inning. Carter will hit as well. A one run game in Chicago.
Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin, presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Spend the night with luxury. Hector Rondon now in for the Cubs as Madden turns to his closer in a one run game here in Chicago. Yep, three for three this year. Hadn't been too many close games that the Cubs have won this year. 30 saves last year with a 167 earned run average. Michael Blazik working out of a bases loaded jam in the eighth. You have Luke Croy, Carter starting this inning. In these conditions, a bloop and a blast, the latter part of that might be a bit much to ask. The yeah, wind blowing in strong. Guy on deck, I don't think it matters what the wind's doing if you get the hold of it. Yeah. We'd be all for a, a bloop from Luke Croy and then have Carter drive one through the wind. 2 and 0 oh to the Brewers catcher. Make it 3 and 0. Oh. Walking a blast would work. Yes, it would. We're not picky. A strike to Luke Roy. Brewers with just three hits in this game, but a big one coming from Ryan Braun, a pitch two run double. Pull his team within a run. Got that done in the eighth inning. And the count is full. Fifth pitcher tonight used by the Cubs. Lucroy working against Rondone here in the ninth. And he struck him out swinging. He's 3 0, and he comes back and gets the strikeout for out number one. They've got him on a high fastball. Rondone with a big fastball. He'll throw a split. And Lucroy. Got ahead quickly 3 and 0 oh, but might have chased one up in his zone at 94 miles an hour on a foul tip. Here's Chris Carter. See if he can still drive one into the wind and tie up this game perhaps five homers 15 RBIs so far this season one and one the count it's Hector Rondon a rule five pick from the Indians Cubs made that move four years ago Carter with a fly ball to right this will carry out a play. One and two the count. Bouncing ball to third. That's Baez. Two outs. Down to their final outs. Here are the Brewers. And here's Kirk Neuenheis. He doubled in the second. And grounded into a double play and took a call third strike in the seventh. Fastball missing from Rondon. Rondon saved 30 games a year ago, 29 in 2014. Newman Heiss holds up. Newman Heiss a good day on Sunday against the Phillies. One for three tonight. Two and one.
2 1 pitch. And there's a base hit to right. And the tying run is on. Yeah, got on top of that big fastball from Rondon. He had to count his favorite two and one, his second hit. Well, he turned on that baby and hit it hard into right. There's your tying run. Mid to upper 90s for Rondon up in the zone, and Neuenheis looking for it and puts a good swing on it. Brewer's still alive. Doing high swing and a pretty good bat these last couple of games here for the crew. Now Aaron Hill. Going after the first pitch. Fouls it out of play. A sacrifice fly did Hill to open up the scoring in the second. Struck out. Walked and scored in the eighth. Came around in that two run double from Braun. Rondon with the 0-1. That's in there for strike two. And that dropped the slider on him that time. No balls, two strikes. The 0 2. There's a fly ball hit back into left field and toward the line. It will be caught by Chris Bryant. Hit it in the wrong spot with the wind blowing in. Different night. Ooh. Would have been a different result right there. Boy, he hit that well. That good ball game hit at Wrigley. Brewer just a little bit short. Man, they battled. He did, but the Cubs able to take advantage when they put the leadoff man aboard in three straight innings. Door open just to crack, and the Cubs took advantage. But the Brewers took him down to the final out as the Cubs take the opener of this series, four to three. Let's send it down to Craig Kashan standing by with Brewers Live post game. Oh, so close for Aaron Hill, boy. Tough loss for Milwaukee. We'll tell you how the fourth run scored for the Cubs. Turned out to be a controversial play in the seventh inning. Get you set for tomorrow night's game two when we come back.